Hello there and welcome back to another chess video. This time we're going to be looking at a very interesting line I came across the other day while playing some online blitz. It's actually this queen f3 move on move 5 in the Vienna which I haven't actually covered yet in my repertoire for black pieces. So the game I've chosen for today will be between two very talented US junior players, Carissa Yip with the white pieces and Justin Wayne with the black pieces. Okay, so the game starts out e4, e5, knight to c3, the Vienna, knight f6. Here white has several moves which I've already mentioned, bishop c4, f4, white plays f4, black plays d5, countering in the center. Again, white has several moves, white takes an e5, most popular one we take on e4 and now previously in my Vienna video I've mentioned the move d3 and knight f3 but I have not yet mentioned this move queen to f3 very very interesting option for white and I believe out of the three probably the better option if you're going to play the Vienna from the white pieces here black has two main lines um, as far as I can tell one is the move knight to c6 and the other is knight takes c3 so after knight takes c3 White will answer with pawn takes c3, black follow, follows with bishop e7 usually, white will put the pawn on d4, black will castle, white will play the move bishop to d3, putting the bishop on the strong diagonal, we can challenge the center with c5, knight e2, knight e6, and typical play follows after white castles. Though I'm not terribly a big fan of this position for black since white has very very easy play, his plan is to play queen g3, the bishop will hop out to h6, the knight will come to f4 later. And this bishop is very, very dangerous, pointing towards our king side. Um, I'm not too much of a fan of this position, so I tried to look for some alternatives. Another move played here for black was knight to c6. After this, typically white will play bishop to b5. Knight takes c3, takes, and black has this very interesting move, queen to h4, check. g3, queen e4, check, takes, takes, and here white can take the knight or delay the capture for a few more moves. Takes, takes, knight e2, bishop c5. Okay, so black has this weakened pawn on e4, white has this weakened pawn on e5. Black has the two bishops and slightly worse pawn structure. Um, in terms of compensation, I, I definitely think black has more than enough compensation. Um, whether it's enough to go on and win the game, I'm, I'm not too sure. But definitely black is relatively happy here and in not too much trouble. Although definitely white will have um, some other options here if he wants to deviate and uh, avoid this endgame. Instead, the option I've chosen for black side is the one played in the game, and it seems to be the most ambitious one for black, and it's to play this move pawn to f5. After pawn to f5, the idea is that we just secure this knight on the e4 square, and if white tries to take on passant, or we just retreat, take back with the knight, white can play the move d4 to prevent d4 from being played. Here we can develop our pieces, bishop to b4, Black already has a very, very pleasant position here, and we have very, very quick development. Next move, we're going to castle, and this queen on f3 is very, very awkwardly placed. Therefore, white needs to continue with his idea of casting queenside. I mean, that's the whole point of bringing the queen to the f3 square so early on. So should follow with bishop to g5, castles. White should castle queenside, of course. But here, black can just play the move pawn to c6, securing this d5 pawn, and there's just no tactics here for white at all. I mean, white can try some tricky move here, such as knight to e4. Very tricky idea. The idea is that if knight takes knight, then he always has this pin in a lot of variations where he'll take the queen and it gets incredibly, incredibly messy. But of course, we can just play the move knight b to d7, we don't need to take this knight, and here white is in somewhat um, of a bind because he doesn't actually want to take the knight f6, 
but he doesn't actually want to move the knight either. And black just has a very pleasant position. The queen will hop out to a5 soon. Although even if we take the knight, I don't see anything wrong with this. Queen b3, shuffle the king over to h8, queen takes b4. This isn't a particularly pleasant position for white either. Other moves such as queen g3 are easily met by bishop f5, where we want to stop this bishop from coming to this very dangerous diagonal on d3. And here black just has a very, very good position. Therefore, white needs to play some other alternative, and the main move is d3. If knight h3, I think black can just play the move knight c6, attacking the pawn here on e5 with a very, very nice position. d3, we takes, takes, and here if you've watched my previous video on the Vienna, you'll know the key move here to play for black. Since white next move will play the move pawn to d4, develop the bishop to the d3 square. So we need to throw in the move d4, cut his pawn chain in half, queen g3, a typical move from white, put pressure on the g7 pawn, stop us from developing our bishop, knight c6, bishop to e2. Now since this bishop has been blocked from the d3 diagonal, white wants to bring it to the f3 diagonal instead, where it's going to put pressure in case black castles queen side, which we most likely will do. Queen d7 was played. Knight e2. Now instead of knight e2, white has some other options here, such as c4, trying to close the center and develop his knight to f4, as well as putting the rook on the b1 square. Here we can simply castles. We can throw in this check on b4, but I'm not sure that it actually does a lot after king to d1. Yes, the king is in the center, but we can't actually take advantage of it. Also, white will play the rook to b1 later, put pressure once we castle queenside. So casting queenside makes sense. Here white plays the move knight to e2. And black can follow with bishop to c5. And let's say white plays the move rook to b1. We always want to answer with the move pawn to b6. It weakens this diagonal quite a bit, but there's no way for white to take advantage of it just yet. And more importantly, we want to stop all counterplay on the queen side in terms of white pushing these c and a pawns. So we don't want to retreat the bishop to b6. We just want to shut off the b file, shut off these pawns completely from the game and continue with our attack on the king side instead so we're going to play g5 we're going to play h6 rook g8 and so on in the game carissa opted for knight e2 but here justin just took on c3 and i believe that black is just a very healthy pawn up here although white does have some compensation i don't believe it's enough. Bishop to e3. Black needs to be a little bit careful though. Um, we don't want to castle too early. So we should delay casting for a little bit. Black plays the move knight to b4, hitting the c2 pawn. Rook to c1, good move was played. Knight comes back to d5. Here white can opt to give up the light squared bishop, but here after that, black should be fine. There's no problems at all. Bishop to f2 was played. And now black simply castled queenside. The rook came back to b1. And black played rook g8, immediately creating counterplay on the king side. Since most of the counterplay on the queen side has been stopped with this knight on d5 blocking everything. castles, we continue with the move pawn to g5. We can see the queen on g3 is very, very awkwardly placed. These bishops actually stop the queen from retreating anywhere um, from the g3 square. Now f4 is a very, very serious threat to trap the queen. White grabs his pawn on a7, but now I believe after b6, the bishop might get trapped. 
Queen goes to f2, pawn continues to g4. Now the bishop on f3 is running out of squares, has to take on d5. The bishop on a7 is trapped, bishop c5 is coming as well. Um, there's a lot of problems here for the white position. Knight c3, queen d4, simply trading queens, very, very simple chess. I'm not trying to overcomplicate things, I like this. Rook takes d4, king h1. Black played the move g3, going for a counterattack. Now the rook will swing across to the h4 square. And we're not too worried about winning this bishop just yet because the bishop is not going anywhere. So black is just trying to create as much counterplay as possible. Rook to h4. Rook fd1. White would like to play the move a4, a5, try to make room for his bishop here on a7, but he just never has time because of the constant threats on the king side. And black was threatening to even take on h3 and play g2 on this previous move. Bishop to c5. Now the bishop's not even going to be able to be sacrificed on b6. Knight to e2, and now black finishes the game with a very, very nice attack. Rook takes h3. Pawn takes, and bishop to d5 is checkmate. So here you see the power of the two bishops, and also just how strong black's attack was, and how simple it was just to push the g-pawn off the board and creating just so many problems um, for white there. Well, that concludes our look into the Queen F3 Vienna from the black side. It's definitely a very interesting line and one of the better options for white on move five. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more chess content. As for now, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.